All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. We've had a long run of Henglong tiger fiddling, so this week we've got another kind of tiger entirely. It's a Dynam Tiger Moth. It says RTF on the box, but this is the ARTF version, which doesn't come with the radio gear or battery. It does come with pretty much everything else, though. All the servos are pre-fitted, as is the motor and speed control. Inside the box, you're presented with more boxes and a few sheets of paper that are supposed to be instructions. From what I've read though, even if you've not assembled many things before, it's all pretty straightforward. All the big bits slot together, and for the most part are held together with a few screws. Great for the beginner, also great if you just want a model to chuck about, and not worry too much about crashing a model with lots of time invested. In the small box we've got all the little bits and bobs. The undercarriage is a fairly typical bent wire jobby. It's got some plastic bits clipped on that makes it look a bit more like the full size one. The bottom links even slide in and out. Neat. In this bag we have the spinner, some glue I think, lots of metal fixings and interestingly a screwdriver and allen key. So even if you're completely toolless you've still got a fair chance of being able to assemble it. This one's got some cockpit decals the cabin and interplane struts, and a load of flying wires to string between the wings. Big box next, which contains the wings. The top wing is just a plain wing with no control surfaces. The fuel tank in the middle is nicely detailed. It's usually one of the bits that gets simplified on a lot of Tiger Moth models. The wings nicely reinforce with what looks like fiberglass strips for spars. The tail parts are fairly nice too. It will be interesting to see if they sit level without any fettling. The tail wheel is pre-fitted. The only issue that might come up is the hinge line tearing from the load of the wheel. It all depends on how well the stress is transferred to the fuselage. The bottom wing has a few more bits on it than the top. It's got the ailerons, so it's got two servos embedded in it with the leads popping out in the middle. It's a shame the control horns are black. It might have been nice to have them in yellow too. The bottom is pretty much the same as the top wing, with the fiberglass strips for reinforcement. Last box now, which must be the fuselage. It's all pre-built more or less, and it feels very solid. We've got the motor at the front, I believe it's 650 kV, and it's spec to run on a 4 cell LiPo. Now, I'm going to try it on 3 cells. On the forums there's mixed reports ranging from it barely flying to it having good performance. Worst case though, I'll have to get a couple of 4 cell packs. They run at about 12 quid for a 2200 mAh pack that fits the fuselage. The push rods appear to be carbon, but they could always be coloured fiberglass, it's always hard to tell, but it doesn't matter much, they're going to do just fine. The wings are held on with lots of screws, so to access the battery the cockpit area comes off. It's got a tongue at the front and a couple of strong magnets at the back. As well as the battery, it also gives us access to the servos. Seems to be very well thought out. It's amazing just how far foamy planes have come in the last 15 or so years. Back then, they were pretty much a joke. They didn't fly very well, they were too heavy, underpowered with the NICAD packs and brush motors, and they looked pretty iffy too. These days, it's hard to go wrong with a foamy. There's trainers with flight stabilizers, warbirds, 3D models, just about every type of model plane. If you don't particularly want to build, they're great. And in a lot of cases, they're cheap too. This Tiger Moth cost about the same as the engine alone on my last Balsa kit build, let alone the cost of the servos and all the other materials. Now, I was hoping to get the assembly done this week too, but I'm recording this on Friday afternoon, and I've had just about enough time to record this between the rain showers. I normally build and assemble in my little white box, but unfortunately it's far too little, making this assembly an outdoor endeavour. Oh well, next week isn't looking so bad, so I might get a chance to put it together for the next video. Right then, that's going to have to be it for this week, so thanks for watching. If you like the video, do please hit the like button, and if you're not already, why not subscribe? It's free after all. Bye guys.